Well, Mark Goodcock, here, like, I thank Deputy Murphy for me now me to go for, for, uh, for first as at a business committee meeting. And I want to congratulate the ministers on the new roads. Minister, I'm appealing uh, to you to re examine the ICOB business uh, supports. Good scheme. Uh, council officials, everybody worked hard with it, but it disqualifies people who are renting a business premises. The owner is paying, the provider is paying the rates, and so the business uh, that's operating there and the business person or people cannot apply for that scheme. So it needs to be tweaked badly. Could you please elaborate? Thank you, uh, Look, As the deputy will be aware, I announced the reopening of the ICOB grant scheme from May 15th to May 29th. This is to ensure that those business owners who missed the deadline can now register. They should do so without delay, and the sooner they register, the sooner the local authority can verify the information and make a payment to the business. I have also made a change to the scheme that allows for a second payment to be made to businesses in the hospitality and retail sector, or a double payment for businesses in those sectors who are now registering. An important aspect of the increased cost of business grant scheme has been to directly involve the local authorities in the authorisation and payment process as they are the closest to the commercial life within their cities and counties and work in the provision of support to smaller enterprises via the local enterprise offices. This is the one reason why eligibility is in part determined by the rate system, which is a good proxy for determining the scale and size of a business. Businesses who are tenants can register as long as they are a rate payer. It has been brought to my attention that some businesses have entered into arrangements with their landlords whereby the rent is payable includes an amount towards the rates, and the rates bill is in turn, in turn satisfied by the landlord. The legal position under Section 4 of the Local Government Rates and Other Matters Act 2019, as well as the amendments through the Historic Archaeological Heritage and Miscellaneous Provisions Act 2023, is that a tenant whose rent incorporates their rates obligation and is remitted by the landlord cannot be deemed to be a rate payer. The Deputy will appreciate that it would be inappropriate and possibly counterproductive for me to attempt to interfere in the existing commercial arrangements between small businesses and their landlords in the context of the increased cost of business scheme. The priority by me was to ensure that as many businesses right up and down this country could receive the funding as quickly as possible. And I would point out that in relation to those who cannot access the scheme, if there is an issue with uh, the landlord or the way they structure their payment of rates, there are other parts of the scheme which they can do. We will have a look at when the scheme has concluded, what money is left over or has not been drawn down for that quarter of a billion euro. My job now is speed, get as much money out to our SME sector as quickly as possible and not get dragged down with putting additional conditionality on those paying the money. I thank the Minister for his reply and I do thank the officials in Tipperary County Council and the department who are dealing with this scheme. But listen, and you give the reasons there why you can't. And I know you want to spend the money to get it into business people's uh, pockets who are struggling to keep the doors open. But there is a cohort, and a quite considerable cohort, who haven't that arrangement that you said as paying rates as part of their rent. So I, I don't know how we're going to tweak it, but it needs to be tweaked some way because those people are very valuable in the, our towns and our villages and where they're paying rates for premises, and they need the supports. And they're not getting it. The business owner may be getting but he can't get it either because he's not operating the business. So it needs some tweaking. And leaving it to the fund left over to, to, to share somewhere at the vice some scheme is not good enough. This scheme now is over a year. And I welcome the, the, the extension uh, from May um, the, the extension date to May twenty ninth and encourage everybody, all business to apply for it. Try and get in in any case, but we must start out this anomaly. We just can't leave it the chance that there'll be money left over and we might tweak it then. It has to be tweaked because there are numerous, as you know, in your own constituency in mine, who are renting uh, premises and, and operating their business on that basis and their owners paying the rates. So we need, we need to uh, tweak that immediately. Thank you, uh, Look, And we all know that commercial arrangements are very different from business to business and how they operate with their landlord. And it is very difficult to put conditionality on to assess every single one. The best metric that I have at the moment to get money out to vulnerable businesses as quickly as possible is linked directly through their rates. If I put more conditions on right now or try and you know, pave the way that opening the scheme to wider priorities, it will be difficult to get the money out quickly. So I will assess it when the scheme is concluded. But I would point out that businesses do benefit from a number of the other measures that we have brought in, like accelerated grants for capital expenditure, like the change for PRSI, like the changes to Microfinance Ireland. There are a number of changes that really benefit those. And the critical thing is this scheme isn't a year old. And I think people really need to realise that when something is announced in the budget, it needs legislation, it needs to be designed. It does take time for a scheme to be operational. We have been very clear with businesses where marketing for 
very strongly now, please register for this scheme. This is a key cash injection right into your bank account to really recognise that there are increased costs of doing business. And we will continue to support businesses in the next budget, which I think will be very important to ensure that we demonstrate clearly. We're listening to our SME sector. We value the employment that provides 70 per cent of all jobs right up and down our country. I don't know, Minister, if you do. I mean, you say that you know, it has to be tweaked because there's a big cohort of people that are in this situation. And you say it takes time and announcement in the budget. The budget is hardly off, it's hardly off the speech here when your colleagues are going around the country with leap for saying this scheme is announced, that scheme is announced, and no legislation in place to deal with it. So you can't have it every way. You can't be advertising that everything is rosy. Everything is, isn't rosy in business. And you have added huge costs to that with carbon tax, with the, with the uh, fuel taxes that you, added, that you raised, that the rebates that were given off back on again. And the extra sick days, the extra bank holidays, the extra parent leave days. So they're all lovely announcements, but they're crippling small business. You know that better than I do. You're living in the real world, and I appreciate your uh, man on the ground. So it's fine to make these announcements and give these. And the minimum wage, I mean, they all add, who did, in a time of severe crisis in business. So we price with costs, with energy costs and everything, electricity costs, everything else. So we need to be more understanding of a scheme like this. There are always going to be issues that they need to be tweaked. So there should be a review mechanism after three months, not waiting the year or now a year and a month or two months to look at back on it. We need to look at these schemes, have uh, some kind of a, a review after three months, how are they bedding in, out of the too many roadblocks for the small business that need them. Thank you, Cahir. Look, I would robustly point out as a government that we are listening to the SME sector. That's demonstrated by our warehouse of debt at 0% for those who experienced difficulties over the COVID period. £20 billion put in towards COVID and Brexit. £12 billion put in over the last two budgets up to Budget 2024. We've halved inflation again, which is a key metric of business. Energy costs have coming down substantially. We want to see that being passed on to the business and indeed the consumer. We have the 9% VAT rate and the energy sector again hitting businesses right now as we speak. And the 15 different interventions that we've done through the SME package brought forward and approved by government last week. This clearly demonstrates that this government Every step of the way of uncertainty of the last four years, we were here front and centre supporting businesses, be it putting them on life support and ensured that they were able to survive and taking out the jump leads when restrictions were lifted to restart them. And our economy factually took off like a rocket. We have 2.8 million people employed in this economy. We are here to protect that. We are here to grow that and ensure that businesses can survive and grow and prosper right into the future. Yeah.